There's a theory with brow mapping, and it's that we're trying to create perfectly symmetrical eyebrows. I have clients who come in all the time saying they want their eyebrows more symmetrical. So this is the good news. There's no such thing as perfectly symmetrical eyebrows. Now, why is that good news? Because if you're like me, you probably spent tons of time trying to make those eyebrows perfectly symmetrical. I hate to break it to you, there's just no such thing as perfectly symmetrical eyebrows. And the reason for this is because we are working on a three-dimensional asymmetrical surface. You have two eyes, is always gonna be a little higher. You have a nose that doesn't sit perfectly center. It goes off one way or the other. One side of the face is going to protrude out more than the other. So it's not even a perfect sphere that's sitting on the shoulders. The shoulders are gonna be higher on one side. I, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you about the asymmetry that I see. Now, you will have clients who have better symmetry than others. What you'll see is that it's a little easier to balance their eyebrows. So what I discovered after years of trying to create perfect eyebrows is stop forcing something that can't be done. Instead, work with it. So instead of seeing two even brows, instead of moving one eyebrow up to meet the other, because that doesn't make sense, right? If I move one eyebrow up to meet the other so that it's perfectly symmetrical, then the space between this eye and this eyebrow is larger than the space between this eyebrow and this eye. Another thing that I've noticed with people who are brow mapping is, are you making them symmetrical or parallel to the ground? So if that makes sense, I, I've noticed that um, when I first started, I think I was trying so hard to make my eyebrows symmetrical or parallel to the ground. Because when we look at the face, you wanna see this straight line across. But that is not realistic, again, because the body is not symmetrical, okay? So the head might tilt a little one way, or one eye might be much higher than the other. If we put those eyebrows parallel to the ground, it's gonna look awkward on the face because like I was explaining earlier, the space between one eyebrow and the eye is gonna be much larger. You improve symmetry. Now it's important to explain this to your client. Explain the fact that the face is asymmetrical. Everyone's face is asymmetrical, not just theirs, but everyone's face is asymmetrical. And your job is to improve the symmetry, okay? So what that means is whatever you do to one side, you have to do the same to the other. This is why when we're making our vertical lines, we check our measurements to make sure that the distance between point A and B are the same on both sides, the distance between B and C, and A and C are all the same. That way we ensure that the length of the eyebrow matches on the right eyebrow and the left eyebrow. The same goes for the horizontal lines, and these are the ones I think people struggle with a little more. How do we make them symmetrical? Or what are we balancing these eyebrows to? I look at a couple of things. The first thing I look at is where are the eyes sitting on the face? What I mean by this is when I'm looking at the eyebrows, I want my eyebrows to be parallel to the eyes, because at the end of the day, we are creating a frame for those eyes. If the eyebrows are parallel to the eyes, they're going to frame the eyes better. Now, unfortunately, because some people have more asymmetry than others, and I'm gonna show you a perfect example of a model who came in for one of my trainings, and her asymmetry was incredible. I mean, one eyebrow was way higher than the other, but so was that eye. That eye was way higher than the other. So the second thing I consider is how much of the natural hair do I wanna use of my client? So if they already have some hair, do I wanna incorporate more of the hair or is it more important to have the eyebrows symmetrical? I asked them, did she want to use more of her hair? This way she could spend less time grooming her hair and she could work with the hair that was already there. And then when we put the microblading strokes in, there was more hair to blend with the strokes that we were putting in because we all know that it looks more natural when you have more natural hair to blend in with your strokes. So if you're moving one eyebrow or if you're moving the eyebrows like this to make them even and you're having to take away a lot of their natural hair and you're putting in synthetic strokes or the microblading to make it appear like they're more balanced, they may not like having to always groom their eyebrows. 
So I look at their asymmetry and then I ask what their preference is. So part of that second part is looking at the natural hair that, that we're working with and what their preference is. Are they comfortable with having to groom their hair all the time and wax all the time and tweeze all the time? Or are they okay with their eyebrows appearing to be a little less symmetrical so that they match their face? So this is what I'm talking about, the theory of are we trying to make the eyebrows parallel to the ground or are we trying to frame the eyes? My personal preference is to work with as much of the natural hair, follow the brow bone, even if it means that the eyebrows may be a little less it's less work for the client, it matches their bone structure, so therefore it looks more natural. However, if the client tells me that something looks off or they prefer more symmetry, then I will try to balance that symmetry out. Now, instead of moving one eyebrow up to meet the other, I'm going to go like this. Because if I move one eyebrow up to meet the other, we might end up with an eyebrow that's on the forehead. And at the end of the day, we know we need those eyebrows to be on the brow bone. So there's a lot of moving parts in this that you do have to consider. And this is what makes brow mapping so difficult. I think it's super comforting to know that there's no such thing as perfectly symmetrical brows. Knowing that improved my brow mapping so much because I was able to work with the client's natural hair, their natural bone structure, and in the end, my clients were happier, my brow mapping became easier and less stressful, and I felt more confident with my brow mapping.